All right, guys, this is Mithril with day 18, or maybe the finale of the Exodus Krieg playthrough. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. But uh, anyways, we're here on, what is this, the Wedding Day Massacre? We did this uh, headhunter, and then we did the Mercenary Day headhunter. We got some good stuff. Let me see here. We got the Maneater. Where's all the stuff? Hold on. The Cutthroat, the Super Ball, the Jumbler, the Killjoy. Uh, the Slide, the Monty. The Grub Staker, the Arctic Fox, the Murph. All these skins I need to get rid of. The Monty. And I think that may be everything. It looks like it. Here's the build. No bar. And now, first thing I'm going to do is do this. Put in this code. And... Hmm. Cannot verify this code, huh? Okay, there we go. There's one. Let me grab the other code. These are all redeemable codes. Hold on. Okay. Okay, sweet. So, the first one... Let me just bring up the page. Okay, so it's a blue rocket launcher. Here it is, the Crimson Sky. Let's put it here. It's a very red. It's a Vladoff. That fire rate, though, that is awful. That reload speed is awful. Mag size of one. Okay, then it's red text is once a raider, always a raider. Four ammo per shot. Okay, what do you do? Oh, it's like a orbital strike. That's kind of awesome, actually. It still actually takes four ammo per shot, it looks like. So I have 31 total ammo for my rockets, and now I have 27. So yeah, it still takes all of that ammo. That's pretty awesome, though, the orbital strike. All right, let me bring over its page. Always fire, locked parts, spawns, a Crimson Raider's beacon, which will call an airstrike on that location for a few seconds. Yeah, you just go right here, get the code, and then uh, just put it in the console. All right, and then the next item is a blue shotgun. Uh should be here unless they change the rarity on it I may have to put in the code again because I do not see it hmm It's a blue bandit shotgun, but maybe, like I said, they changed it? That's the Crimson Sky. Huh. Yeah, I have no idea where it is. That's odd. That's the man-eater? Yeah, I don't know where it is. Nope, not that. I meant to do this and then sort page up and down. Really? Why would it be that? Brand types. It's a shotgun. Yeah, it's not here. Okay. That's odd. Let me just bring over the page, I guess. Because it said I redeemed it. So here it is, the show. 
yeah i definitely did not see that fire rate is pretty slow reloads about okay for a bandit 19 mag its red text is hashtag ass bandits four ammo per shot huh fires a single rocket that spawns confetti and fireworks is a reference to a youtube borderlands machinima by glorious george yeah weird i wonder why it's not here hmm yeah that's that's odd i don't see it well anyways let us continue on with the video finally Okay, so we need to farm Cromrax, or the son of Cromrax, the Invincible, for four items, it looks like. Oh, sweet, we got one. The Penetrator. That's from BL1. In the original version, the Penetrator can come in all sorts of uh, rarities. However, it is supposed to be a legendary. Nope, not this. In the remaster, it becomes a legendary. Okay, it's got yellow camo. It's a legendary doll sniper. Stats looking okay. It's red text is sniper killer and then some French. And then 160% critical hit damage. So I imagine it's fully auto. Yeah. Okay, so it's like it's a BL1 counterpart basically. All right, let's see here. The penetrator, here we go. Fully automatic, increased fire rate, and then recoil reduction and ammo capacity. Psycho killer, uh, okay. I guess it's not gonna say that it's a reference to the BL1 version, but uh, I think we all know that. I do like that. Yeah, this is probably one of the best uh, snipers in BL1. So yeah, that's uh, pretty nice. Hey, we got a new one, the Crux. Man, the Crux on Brick or Roland, top tier. Where is it, the Crux? Here it is. We can put it uh, here. Okay, times 11, not very accurate. Slow fire rate, reloads okay, 25 mag. Its red text is, cross their heart, hope they die. Three ammo per shot. So I imagine it's just like the crux from the uh, first game. Yeah. Yep. Looks like it. Yeah, on brick. Ooh boy. This thing can get a going. All right, awesome. I'm seeing a theme here. It looks like the son of Cromrax is going to drop pretty much uh, BL1 weapons. Let me bring over its page with the crux. Come on. Spread pattern is an upright cross explosive splash. Uh, line of cross. Cross my heart. Hope they die. By SNS, yeah. In uh, BL1, they didn't have Bandit or COV, they had SNS munitions. Alright, awesome. Do you like it? Hey, we got one. Well, I'm not gonna say that, but we got one. It's a legendary Torg AR. Where are you? you are we'll put you here so yeah another bl1 gun stats are looking pretty good it's red hex is torg blank guns for blank people so i imagine it's pretty much the same yep Yeah, feels the same. 
It has increased damage, fire rate, and mag size, but it has lower accuracy and increased recoil. Oh, it's also in the grinder in the pre-sequel. That's why this is down here. I'm like, why is that down here? But yeah, it's pretty much just the uh, just the BL1 weapon. All right, one last weapon to find from Crumrax or the son of Crumrax. Oh, finally, we got the Rhino. Man, that took forever. That was like half an hour of nothing. Okay, the Rhino. I think I passed you. Oh, that's the binary. There it is. Put it here. Okay, the Rhino. A legendary Malawan rocket launcher. Very blue. Slow fire rate. Long reload. That is a long reload right there. Or mag. Its red text is the unstoppable force. So I imagine it does the same thing as in the first game. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, let me bring it up. The Rhino. Come on. The rocket will explode at regular intervals while in flight. So yeah, this was the pyrophobia before the pyrophobia. Okay, it's also in the pre-sequel, looks like, yes. All right, that is all of the items from the Son of Cromrax. Now we can move on. Okay, we come back over here to Hammerlock and we get the Victims of Vault Hunters quest. Okay, we turn it in and we get the fratricide. I think is how you say that, the fratricide. So it's a blue TDR SMG. Please put you here. Stats are looking okay. That reload time is kind of long for a TDR. Its red text is the only thing more accurate than incoming enemy fire is incoming friendly fire. We get 25% melee damage. It's slag. What does it do? Yeah, that's a slow reload. Okay, but it's like the baby maker. It explodes and drops a grenade. Hmm. Okay, let's bring over the page. Oh yeah, once you do the quest, you can get it from Sparky, the son of Flint. On reload, the main projectile deals massive damage with a large blast radius, which will then leave a small grenade for second explosion, deals friendly fire damage, that could be good on, well, Krieg already has that skill, so never mind. And then it has a decreased reload speed. Okay, so the name is like Brother Killer. Hmm. Why would you want the friendly fire damage? Just to be a troll? I don't know, maybe, but still kind of cool. All right, we have one more item, and that is from Sparky, the son of Flint. Oh, we got it. Nice. The Boomstick MK8.00B. But I think we all know what that last uh, part stands for. Okay, what can I get rid of? Uh, Let's get rid of this one. Okay, let's put this here. So the boom stick. Not accurate at all. Its damage is pretty low. Fire rate's okay. Reload speed is pretty slow. For mag, its red text is way beyond groovy. 
consumes one ammo per shot 50 percent critical hit damage 25 percent melee damage so i imagine you do what the original boomstick does yep okay it shoots rockets expands six round magazine with one pull to trigger heavily decreased accuracy can spawn with any element dealing additional elemental splash damage on impact and then it's a reference to sam Raimi's Raimi's youtube army of darkness movie okay then it's a flashback to the force uh the force the first borderlands the boomstick from baron flint How many does this have in the magazine? This has six. Mine has what, four? Yeah, I only have four. All right. Well, uh, yeah, there you go. Let's see, how much time do I have left? I think I have enough time for a little bit of pearl farming. But not a whole lot, so I guess we'll see if we get lucky enough to get it. So let me go and do that. Okay, I was unfortunately not able to get any pearls to draw. So, this is what I'm going to do. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. This one, hold on, I'm just opening up new tabs. Let's go back up here. Sure, let's do this one, and then we can do this one. Okay, so you get this one from Lootness, and it's called the Kaleido. It's a pearlescent Vladoff shield. Let's see, it gives us elemental resistance and absorb chance. Its red text is, what a tingly sensation. All received status effects on you recharge your shield. In addition, you deal increased elemental effect damage when shield is active. Nice. So if you're on fire, you're going to be doing more fire damage, it sounds like. Uh, da -da -da. Multiplies elemental effect damage by times two when shield is active. Shield must be active in order to get the effect. Okay. Okay, there's number one. Same thing for this one. You get it from the loot nest. It's called the Oblivion, a pearlescent Torg grenade. Huge damage, huge radius, no fuse time. Its red text is the Destroyer of Worlds. And it sets off a large nuclear explosion on impact. Nice. Okay, that one's pretty basic, but still pretty nice. Here is the next thing, a pearlescent relic. Come on. Gives us max health, health regen, and a chance to ignore death. Wow, by 30%. Put this on with Axton and Grift. That could be a good combo. Okay, it's red text is, what hope do you have to resist? Increase health and gives health regeneration chance to ignore death. Uh, it functions as Axton's grit skill. Okay. Okay, that's what I just said. It said using the undying with the grit is a good strategy. Five out of five in the skill grants a 20% to ignore death, which can be boosted up to 11 out of five or 44% combined with the undying. It's unknown if the Undying's effect will restore 50% of max health, like Brit's effect, okay. It's reference to Warhammer 40k. So wow, 44% there, 30 here. That's pretty good. Okay, the next one, you can get this from Tubby Enemies or the Binary Boss. It's called the Thunderbolt, a Pearl Rocket Launcher. Slow fire rate, reload's pretty long. I can't see the red text. 
the red text is, they need to be reminded of the order of things. Always a shock on impact, three lightning bolts will strike from above, dealing massive damage in large radius, consumes two ammo per shot. Uh, there's all this. It's a reference from the movie Clash of the Titans. Okay. And then finally, we have the Anomaly, also from Tubby Enemies and Binary Boss. It's a pearlescent SMG. Pretty slow for an SMG, but other than that, everything looks okay. Its red text is, by our powers combined. No matter, no matter with what element it spawns, it will always and only deal adaptive damage versus enemies. Creates slag novas upon hitting any other surface. Increase elemental effect damage. Adaptive, huh? So if they have a shield, it's going to be doing shock, I think. If they're flesh targets, it's going to be doing fire. And then if they're armored, it's going to be doing corrosive. That's really powerful. And then it's a play on the catchphrase by your powers combined. I'm Captain Planet. Wow, a Captain Planet reference. This SMG could be super strong. But uh, yeah, there you go, guys. That's going to be the finale. Too bad I couldn't get a pearl to drop. But, you know, Cromorax or the son of Cromorax took forever to get all of the items. So blame him. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and a subscribe because it's welcome on my channel. And I will appreciate it like always. And then I hope to see you guys next time.